So the comprehension, if you have not read the story, make sure you read the story, but here are the answers to the comprehension. Why is the horse snake more dangerous than other snakes? What do you think? Well, if I can remember correctly, it's poisonous as well as squeezing people. Is that correct? Am I remembering correctly? I read this Monday or Friday. I believe it's poisonous. Number two, why does the grandmother tell the story about the father and son who face a horse snake? Now, we read this on Monday, and it's actually where we stopped with the story from the grandmother. We talked about it, and the reason she told it is because she wanted to um, give hope to the boy. Because remember, he was scared and he did not know like how they were going to defeat this snake. And so she told him a story of a father and son who were able to kill the snake and how they did it so that the boy could use that knowledge and kill the snake currently. So you didn't have to do this because as you were doing your active re reading, hopefully you did this. Remember the literary analysis, understand chronological order. Once again, I'm just going to remind you, I see this, chron, chrono means time. That's a root word. That means to put things in order. Over what period of time do the events in this selection take place? Use your timeline to figure it out. Then note when most of the events occur. So I think what they mean here is not an actual date, but I think they mean um, time of day. And do you remember, when did most of this story take place? During the day or during the night? During the night, that's right, because remember that one vocab word is nocturnal. And so when you guys have these pages, remember, you don't have to do any of the writing. We're not, we're not going to do that this year. Anything that says to do any research projects, you don't have to do that. The making inferences, obviously, that is an active reading skill. So hopefully you were able to make some inferences there. I know that the one inference that we made is what was up here. The reason she told the story was to give the boy hope. Number six, imagery. Now we talked about imagery last fall. When you see this word, what's the other word that comes to mind that you know? Image, right, which is a picture. And do we remember why authors use imagery? I'm trying to think of what, this must have been Edgar Allan Poe. I think maybe we did imagery because he, uh, yeah, exactly. So they use imagery to help the reader visualize it a little bit better, kind of like what they said, bring the setting alive, okay? Analyze narrative nonfiction. Hopefully you were doing that as you were reading. We talked about conflicts on Monday. If you um, forget the types of conflicts, look at the video from Monday. We talked about the four types of confl conflicts. Remember, extension and challenge, you never have to do the extension and challenge just because we have so much to do and I don't see you that often. On the back, here, is the here are the vocabulary words. Choose the letter of the word or phrase that is not related in meaning to the other words. So number one, they have pace, step, gate, Feet. 
choose the letter of the word or phrase that is not related in meaning. So here's the vocab word. Here's the homophone. Do you remember what gate, this kind of gate means? What's this refer to? How somebody walks, right? So would we say, what's pace? Does that deal with somebody's walking? Yep. What about step? Yep. What about feet? Does it, does feet deal with how somebody walks? Probably not. The best answer here, I mean, they're all related, but this one here is the one that's not, because this does not describe their, their type of walking. Do you get that? You need feet to walk, but it doesn't describe their walking. Number two, stealthily. This is the vocabulary word. What does stealthily mean? Do you remember? Jacob, do you remember what stealthily means? Remember I told you about the plane that the military has and what they use it for and why they created it? Secret. Very good. So stealthily means secret. What a, okay, so this one obviously. Slyly. What does it mean to be sly? Sly as a fox. So clever or, or secretly, right? So that's what that word means. So the best choice, swiftly means to be quick. So that one does not fit. Number three, frighten, petrify. Petrify is the vocab word. What does petrify mean? Scared, so we know frighten is a synonym. Confuse, this one's really easy, right? So confuse is the one that does not uh, belong. Number four, sunny, nocturnal, nocturnal, I just said that to you, moonlit and dark. Sunny, very good. Sunny does not fit. Number five, take on, move on, undertake, and assume. All right, assume is the vocab word, and that means what? In this context, if you assume responsibility, that means to take on, let's just use their words, right? So we know this one fits. Undertake means to take on, that fits. So the one that does not fit, move on. Succumb is the vocab word. This means to quit, reject, refuse, or throw away. I think it's throwaway. Yep, absolutely. Good job. That's the best choice. Remember, you do not need to do vocabulary in writing. Vocabulary strategy, word origins. I do want to read this because we are studying some root words and it's important that you know about word origins. Many words that we use every day have interesting histories. For example, the vocabulary word petrify can be traced back to a Latin word that means rock. If you saw something that petrified you, do you think it would make you freeze in place like a rock? Dictionaries often provide information about a word's origin, origin and an etymology at the end of the dictionary entry. So the word etymology deals with um, word origins. Etymologies can help you understand the meaning of an English word by relating the unfamiliar word to something you know. The etymology is in brackets in the entry shown. Okay, so here's, these are brackets. So here's the etymology. This tells you where, how this word was created and where it came from. And it is important to know that. And that's kind of what I just told you about the root words that you need to put into your digital notebook. So now, just to review, make sure that you guys in your digital notebook have the root words because you're going to have a root word quiz on Friday. I'll pull it up to show you the um, root words.
And so you can get started on this. If you don't have a digital notebook, send me an email and I will send you a video. Okay, so remember, go to January Lessons, send you a video so you can do that and we'll try and get that done. And it is the week of 125. Click on the schedule. Let's just make sure everything is there. Okay, so I have it under yesterday, because this is what we did yesterday. And so today I'm giving you time to get your digital notebook updated. Remember this is a video, it talks about homophones. You need to watch what a homophone is. Yes, yep, yep. Don't forget to do the exit ticket for Monday. There is no exit ticket for Tuesday because I want you to do the root words. So here are the root words. These are the vocab words for horse snake. And so when you, just to refresh everybody's memory, your digital notebook is in Google Slides <laughs> it's in Google Slides. Now, this is eighth grade, but I'm just going to show you. You know, whenever you do your vocab, always put the title of the story. This was the raven. We read the raven. And then here's the vocab word. Here's the definition. So I can see it real easy. After you make your pages to create that, to type, you just add a text box. To add the pages after you create them, you go to this little arrow, scroll down, there's all of my pages for this. I'm gonna add another vocab page. So here, this is for, let's just say the horse snake. There's a text box. I'm going to make a text box. And then I can start typing, but I wanna make sure that's bigger. All right, so go ahead and work on that and get those checked. I won't have a notebook checked this week, but probably next week I will, just so we're all hopefully have everything caught up.